In this fifth set of slides, we're going to look at the estimation of the parameters in the spatial error model by means of generalized method of moments, the GMM approach. So the principle of this is very much the same as what we already discussed for maximum likelihood estimation, uh, the spatially weighted these squares, but I'll repeat it here just for completeness sake. And then we'll move on to the actual GMM estimation, which is quite dense. It involves a lot of mathematical equations, but the principle is actually quite straightforward. And so we'll just focus on that, and I'll provide you with the equations as background. And then we will close with the estimation of a model that includes both a lag and an error term, spatial error term, which we uh, call in the, in the manual, we call it the combo model, but in the literature it's often called the SAR-SAR model, or a double spatial autoregressive model. So first the principle, which is the same as before. We have a situation where we have a standard linear regression specification, y equals x beta plus an error term, but the variance covariance matrix of the error term, E of u u prime, is a general matrix sigma and not the uh, simpler version with a fixed variance and no autocorrelation or no correlation. So the generalized least squares principle or GLS principle assumes sigma known, which is of course not very practical, but it's good to get a sense of the mechanics of how this works. And the standard textbook result is that the generalized least squares is basically uh, very similar to OLS, but with this inverse variance-covariance matrix inserted in between the terms. So we have x prime sigma inverse x fully inverted, and then x prime sigma inverse y. And the variance is x prime sigma inverse x inverted. There's no more uh, sigma term in the variance because uh, the small sigma, I mean, in the variance as in the OLS case, because it's all subsumed into the general matrix sigma. Sometimes the notation is slightly different where uh, there is a scaling factor applied to the general variance covariance matrix to ensure that the sum of the diagonal elements of the matrix is equals the number of observations to keep the similarity with the standard sigma squared i case, but we're not going to dwell on that. Okay, GLS is fine in theory, but it's impractical. Feasible generalized least squares, or FGLS, is the operational implementation of GLS. And the uh, great property that we exploit, and we've already discussed this when we talked about maximum likelihood estimation, is that because the variance-covariance matrix is block diagonal between the parameters of the model and the error terms, we only need a consistent estimate of the nuisance parameter and not necessarily an efficient estimate. So we typically operate in two steps. In one step, we get a consistent estimate for the lambda, and then we plug it into the variance-covariance matrix to do the second FGLS step. Now, in, as we've already seen, in the spatial autoregressive error model, this inverse of the variance-covariance matrix simplifies greatly because the variance-covariance matrix itself is very complex and contains an inverse term, but the inverse of that inverse term cancels out, so that gives us the spatially weighted least squares, where we replace the original variables x and y by their spatially filtered counterparts. So spatially filtered x is the original x minus lambda, the parameter, times the spatial lag of x, and the spatially filtered y is the original y, minus lambda times the spatial lag of y. So that's um, a very straightforward application of FGLS because of the particular structure of the variance-covariance matrix. It turns into spatially weighted least squares. Of course, we have to get a consistent estimate for lambda, and that's 
where the GMM principle will come into play. The second step of the FGLS is the variance, and that is again a very standard result. We plug in the sigma inverse, which turns out to be um, the spatial filter, so that the variance of the feasible generalized least squares estimator is sigma squared times um, spatially filtered x prime spatially filtered x again and the whole thing inverted. So the principle is the same as what we've seen for general uh, in the maximum likelihood case. The only difference and a key difference of course is going to be how we get a consistent estimate for the nuisance parameter lambda and we turn to that next.